Hello and welcome to the channel. Today we're going to talk about how you can manage approval timeouts and escalations. Let's go. The idea behind this video came from a colleague who came to me and had a question about how to manage approvals and timeouts. The scenario was you might have someone that is on vacation and if they're on vacation and they're not paying attention to their approvals, then this business process is essentially stuck. So what they wanted to know is, is there a way to time out an approval and then have an escalation path that would assign that approval to a delegate. So that's the focus of this content for today. Now there's two features that are going to help us achieve our goal of being able to defer these approvals. One is a timeout duration property that is part of our approvals actions. We're going to see that. And then also we're going to determine when this event has occurred. When has our approval timed out? And then as a result, we'll be able to use configure run after settings to detect this and then have some additional logic that takes care of this scenario. Serverless Notes is a community resource that covers best practices, tips, and latest announcements built on contributions by technology enthusiasts and collated from various resources. This resource is structured as first-hand reference material for anybody working with Azure Serverless integration. You can go ahead and subscribe to newsletters and browse serverless tips. The Serverless Notes community is brought to you by Serverless 360, a portal focused on operations and support for Microsoft Azure serverless resources. It provides exceptional tooling that is not available in Azure portal and is an alternative to custom built solutions. You can find more at serverless360.com. So here I've got a scenario that we're going to dive deeper in the demo, but on the surface, this is what it looks like. So we're going to have an expense submission process. And then we're gonna send this off to what I'm calling the first level approver. Now this approver is going to have a fixed period in which they have the opportunity to respond to this approval. They can approve or reject, or in theory they can reassign. But the whole purpose here is that we're gonna give them a, this window. And if they do not acknowledge or respond within that window, we are going to have a timeout duration exception raised and then what we're going to do is we're going to catch that and then route this off to a second level approver who can respond to this approval on their behalf. So with that out of the way, let's go ahead, let's dive right into the demo. Okay, so here I'm in Power Automate and what I'm going to do is walk you through this flow. Now I've kept this flow very simple on purpose. The core things we want to talk about in this video are the timeout duration and the configure run after setting. So I've kept everything else around it very simple. So we're gonna have a manually trigger a flow trigger and that's just basically gonna kick off our, our business process. Now here what we have is our first level approval. Now this is gonna go out and send this off to our approver and we're gonna include some details about the approval itself, like a link to the item that they're asked to approve. Now this is where we need to make a change. By default, a flow will run for 30 days, up to 30 days. Now, that means an approval can last for up to 30 days. And this is part of our issue. The issue is that while someone's on, say, a one-week vacation, uh, everything's running fine from a flow perspective. But in the meantime, you've got someone that's now waiting a week to get approval so that they can go do something. Now, so what we're going to do is we're going to say, let's time this thing out. Now, what I've done here is I've got a, basically it's, um, it's an ISO standard, 8601 I believe, that we use to indicate how long we're willing to time this out. Now, in this case, what we're doing is it's gonna be P, T, and then one M. So what this means is one minute. So we could go ahead and say this is, is 10 minutes, right? Now, for the that's not a practical, value in the real world, but for running a demo, we're going to stick with one minute. Now, here's a couple other values on screen that represent some common thresholds that you might want to use, including 
how do you measure this in days and weeks? So for the purpose of this video, one minute will suffice. So what's gonna happen though, is after one minute, we're gonna actually essentially time this action out and we need to be able to handle that situation. So I'm sure for those of you who have created approvals before, this block here is going to look rather familiar. Whenever you have an approval, what you do is you go ahead and add an action, that action is gonna be a condition, and you go and check to see if your outcome is equal to approve. This represents our happy path when we have someone that is approving or responding within our threshold. Now, what happens is when we, you know, someone has exceeded our threshold, we need to handle that process differently. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a parallel branch here, right? So that's how we get around this. Now, I don't want to keep that, so I'm gonna get rid of it, but we would add a parallel branch in the one, the left-hand side of our branch, that represents our happy path. In the right-hand side, that's where we're going to basically handle this timeout issue. And so what we can do is we can go ahead and add an email action that's going to indicate to the original requester that their approval has timed out and hey, heads up, we're sending this off to a secondary approver. Now you might notice we've got this dotted line thing going on here. And the reason we have this dotted line going up is that this represents an exception path. So how do we do this? On the email action itself, we click on the ellipsis and then we click on configure run after. And then this is super important. So what this is gonna say is for our previous action, when it has timed out, then we want to go ahead and run this action. Now, by default, let's go to here. Let's check it out over here. This is the default. Whenever you add a new action after a previous action, by default, Power Automate will always include this is successful condition. And that allows basically your flow to continue whenever it is successful. Here we're saying only run this branch when we actually have a timeout. So the next thing we're gonna do, we've sent off an email to the requester saying, hey, this approval has time out. We are now sending this off for a secondary approval. So here what we're doing is we will indicate to this user that they've got an escalated approval that they're required to respond to. And then this will basically follow the same convention that we do for all of our, you know, for your typical approvals saying, if this person goes ahead and approves it or, or rejects, then we're gonna head down to this path and we're gonna check for the outcome and then we can go ahead and send an, a notice saying it's been approved or send a notice indicating that it has been rejected. Now, you could take this and extend this much further than I have. This is more just for awareness around those two features. Like here, we could go ahead and expand on this again and set another timeout and say, okay, well, we're gonna give this person a couple days and maybe then we send a, a third level of escalation. The other thing we can do is we can make these values dynamic in terms of who we're assigning to. So maybe in a SharePoint list, you keep a, a list that represents your different levels of approvals and you can pull from that list to figure out who you should be sending this to. Uh, you could also use Office 365 and the users connector to detect who is their boss so if perhaps this is my manager and they don't respond in time, so then it would go to their manager. And basically we can continue to cascade down the stack in order to reach someone. So let's go ahead, let's give this a run and let's see this in action. Naturally, I don't think you wanna stare at my screen for, an app, for a minute rather. So what I will do is I will pause the recording and we will see exactly what happens after one minute. Okay, so what we saw here was that we did experience a timeout because that forced us to head down the escalation path. And then what I did do is I went ahead and approved that request as the secondary approver. And then we can see that we've actually gone ahead and the rest of our flow has completed. So this is how you can handle approvals and dealing with timeouts and obviously you can build upon it you can send notifications out and give people warnings that sort of thing but this is one approach that's pretty simple that you can go ahead and implement right away and help to manage those approvals to ensure that they don't fall into a black hole 
All right, thanks for checking out this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you're not following me on social media, I would encourage you to do so. You can find me on Twitter at Weirzy. Obviously, you're on my YouTube channel, so you found that. That's awesome. But if you do like this content, please go ahead, and like, and subscribe. I'd love to hear from you. And then lastly, I do have some Udemy courses on Power Automate and on Azure Logic Apps. I've got some discount codes at the following URL, so please go ahead and check that out. So once again, thanks for checking out my channel, and we'll see you soon. I do post weekly, so I would encourage you to come back and check out my latest video. Thanks.